Hey guys, it's Comic here and welcome back for another tutorial video on my channel and in this tutorial I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to get the maximum FPS possible in Minecraft on your computer and this sort of applies for other games as well but this tutorial is directed towards Minecraft and we'll be covering most things that can help Minecraft run faster so if you're here for other games I'm sorry to disappoint you you might still want to watch it because there's some stuff that helps other games as well but this is directed towards Minecraft now I'm going to split the section just a bit for laptop users stay right here for desktop users I'm going to leave a timestamp on an annotation you can click that or just put go to that time I think I don't think they I think they've disabled uh, clicking uh, timestamps on annotations but if you can just click on uh, if you can click or just go to that timestamp point and uh, uh, your video starts from there for laptop users I'm gonna teach you guys how to um, speed up your PC just a little bit so it can um, it can work a lot faster and help you in gaming performance now none of this is illegal none of this avoids the warranty or any of that shebangalang Shabangalang, really? Uh, whatever. Um, so let's just go uh, to your power thing imaging, a uh, power battery icon you have, and just go into power options. And here you'll be greeted with all of this. So these are basically your power plans you can choose. And uh, now you won't have high performance clicked, you'll probably have either power saver, balanced, or um, a company verified custom plan click so it could be if you're using a Dell laptop it'll be a Dell power plan if you're using a freaking HP laptop it could be an HT, HP power plan but none of that matters what you want to do is this is going to be something like this so it's going to say show additional plans you just want to go click there and you want to click on high performance now once you're in high performance you want to click change plan settings go into change advanced power settings I'm gonna be a bit slow in this part because it can get a bit complicated don't worry you're not having to change a lot of settings which might affect your computer uh, with these settings though the computer could get a bit hot don't worry nothing uh, will be damaged uh, and that is because Intel CPU automatically reduces your processor state once it starts to heat up so if you have a decent ventilation system it shouldn't heat up at all or very little and shouldn't thermal throttle which is what Intel processors do once they're starting to heat up they reduce the speed but if you don't have a good ventilation system like I do it will just reduce the speed a little bit which won't matter because you've already increased your speed quite a bit up so yeah you can follow this if you want it's gonna make your computer in general a lot faster for gaming and for any day-to-day -day activity so first of all you want to go into if you don't have a secondary graphics card which is either AMD or Nvidia and you're running with the onboard graphics card which is Intel or graphics settings you want to click on the plus icon click on Intel or graphics power plan and set it to maximum performance on battery and on plugged in. Now this is only for when you're gaming. So when you're not gaming, I recommend you change the power uh, plan from high performance to maybe balanced or to maybe power saving, depending on how much battery you want to save and how long your day is going to be without a charger for your laptop. So I have them both set to maximum performance because I, I'm not outside the house for more than three to four hours a day with my laptop. So I can just keep it here plugged in and it doesn't really affect me. So I have them both set to maximum performance and this is only for those who don't have a, a secondary graphics card. I do have a secondary graphics card but I just keep this on because when I'm video editing I kind of use the uh, primary graphics card as well. Anyways, next we're going to go into uh, processor power management. I click, I click PCI Express by mistake and over here in minimum processor state you want to set on battery 100% plugged in 100%. Again, if you this will re, uh, this will th give a big hit on your battery life if you're not plugged in. So I do recommend when you're using these settings, you are plugged in into a power adapter. Always, it's always a good idea when you're gaming that you're plugged in, because the this provides a higher level of power to your battery, which can help give more power to the graphics card and the Intel CPU and generally just bump up the performance just a bit and with these computers I'm guessing not all of you have good laptops or gaming and high-end gaming laptops and we're just trying to gain as much FPS as we can in every place as in whatever place we can on the computer so anywho you want to set all of both of these to 100% you want to set system cooling policy always active now this is going to make your laptop fan constantly on which could be a bit noisy but this is something you're going to have to trade in for performance and uh, otherwise your CPU is going to heat up and it's going to thermal throttle aka lose a bit of its speed as it goes on. Don't worry the speed loss isn't permanent once your laptop cools down a bit maybe a uh, temperature or two 
it's gonna gain back that speed in the form of turbo boost uh, or just in the form of normal boost anywho so you want I have both of them active you can have both of them active as well and maximum processor state is always 100% this keeps the CPU running at 100% constantly while you game and it could be a bit taxing and it could uh, cause the computer to heat up a little. Don't worry, it won't damage anything and um, just it won't decrease your performance in any way. It's just gonna, in the long run, maybe you'll thermal throttle a little bit and if you leave your computer for maybe half an hour to cool down, it'll just be back to normal and you'll be ready to go all over again. And um, for display, not really anything you want to change. For multimedia, nothing. So now, if you have NVIDIA or maybe you have AMD, and I have AMD, so you're going to have switchable dynamic graphics. For global settings, you want to go for maximized performance on battery and plugged in. I've noticed this is kind of weird. On plugged in, if you do optimized performance, you get more FPS. I do not know why, but it could be just my graphics card. Otherwise, I would recommend a maximized performance setting. And again, on ATI graphics, power, uh, power settings, and you want to set both to maximize performance. This is, again, only for AMD. If you're running NVIDIA, it could be under different heads, but it, there will definitely be switchable uh, dynamic, uh, dynamic graphics, and you could click those. And increase your performance to maximize and maximize both. Uh, so I'm just going to click out of here. And from this point, I believe everything I do will be effective for both desktop users and laptop users so welcome back desktop users and let's just see next thing you need to download i'll leave a link in the description it's a completely free software is razer cortex this is a software provided by razer core or the razer range of laptops and right now i'm not using it because i'm recording and i don't really need to use it so i have my, both my games here these are not all my games these are just two games that are boost in so you want to go into boost and you want to go into either manual boost or an automatic boost and the boost level you can choose to custom or recommended I always go for recommended and you want to switch automatic boost on and the rest you can let it be and you just want to press boost now I'm not going to do that right now because I'm recording and I don't know what that will do while this recording so when you do the boost now when you press the boost now button what it does is it uh, just stops the background processes from taking place which gives more RAM and more CPU power to the game you're playing because it's not a background process it's a, a primary process that your computer is running which makes it run a bit faster also if you're not running Windows 10 you don't have automatic defragging and you might want to defrag your computers uh, your folders for the games which also helps maybe a 2 or 3 percent FPS boost I wouldn't say 2 or 3 percent I would say like 5 to 10 FPS boost, but if you're, again, if you're running a lower end laptop or the, uh, PC, you're gonna want all the FPS you can get. Now the next settings are gonna be in Minecraft itself, so I'm gonna jump into Minecraft and I'll let you guys know. Okay, so before I actually jump into Minecraft, I do recommend downloading a launcher called AT Launcher. What this launcher does is you can get your uh, all your accounts in one launcher and it's stupid easy to change so this is one of my new alts and this is like my main account which is right here and uh, you can set up different instances by clicking on packs now I'm gonna do a sort of mini tutorial for this right now and I'm gonna go for vanilla and you can just do a new instance choose whatever version of Minecraft you want all the way back to 1.0 and it even allows you to get into the beta versions if you go further down here and uh, what it'll also do is, let's say I click on 1.8.9, which is the preferred PvP um, uh, pack for vanilla, vanilla Minecraft that I use. And what I want to do here is I want to press install and it'll ask me, oh okay, there's already a name by that so I'm just going to add that, install and it'll start install processing. Now what I like about AT Launcher is right here, this, and you can choose Minecraft Forge and Optifine Ultra. And um, I would recommend that you click on Minecraft Forge and then add the Optifine Ultra into the uh, Minecraft Forge folder as it is easier to do. I'm not going to install it because I already have a pack installed. And now the rest of the settings you'll need to have Optifine installed, and which I just showed you how to do. It, it's not rocket science guys, you can easily do it. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys when I'm in Minecraft.
Okay guys, now we are in Minecraft and I'm gonna be teaching you what all you need to change. First of all, you need Optifine installed. I'll again leave the link in the description. But it would be easier for you guys to just download AT Launcher and go in from there and create a new instance with Optifine pre-installed. Now, one thing I forgot to mention in the AT Launcher part of this video was if you install Minecraft Forge recommended and uh, Optifine together in the mod section, it's not gonna work, it's just gonna crash. So you wanna install Minecraft Forge first and then in the fo uh, Forge, mods folder which is easy to locate you just want to drag and drop the optifine jar file and you'll just have a working optifine file in which you can add extra mods if you want now as you can see i have optifine 1.8.9 hdu h2 installed so i'm already ready to go so in options you want to go into video settings you want to set this to fast you want to set this to anywhere between three and five that those are the best ones then you want to set this to max frame rate, use v view bobbing off, VBoss on. Then you want to set brightness to bright and it really doesn't matter. Brightness doesn't matter, GUI scale doesn't matter. Alternate blocks, I would, again, doesn't matter. Um, I would then go into quality. Now this is where it gets important. You might want to copy all almost all of these settings. So connected, text connected textures off. Um, I have them off or you could turn them to fast as well but for me it was crashing for some reason I do not know why but you can change it to fast and then you want to have custom sky off swamp colors off you want to have everything basically off here and uh, you want to go custom colors off smooth bombs off now this isn't gonna necessarily make your Minecraft look great and once you've done the, all of this and you see you're getting a much higher frame rate than you were expecting and you can shed some FPS for some better quality you can just come and turn on some stuff here and it'll be like nothing ever changed so custom items I leave on because I haven't really noticed anything so I'm just gonna actually turn it off because it says here it's faster there you go and you can press done then in performance I have smooth FPS on I have fast render on I have chunk updates on lazy chunk loading on even though I have a multi-core processor this doesn't matter if you have a multi-core processor and um, Smooth world on fast math of dynamic updates off. Uh, then you want to go into animations, particles decreased. And now, if you're, I, I have them on decreased, you can set them to completely off if you want. And uh, in details, you want clouds off, trees default, or you can set them to fast as well. Sky off, uh, sun and moon off, stars off, show capes off, everything off. Uh, entity shadows, it doesn't matter. Held item tooltips, again, doesn't matter. Um, translucent bo blocks you want to set this to fast dropped items you want to set this to fast again and um, that's pretty much it you're done with the settings so now I'm gonna show you guys the FPS you can achieve by doing all of this now do remember I am recording so that's gonna drop my FPS just a bit lower than usual than for maybe you guys who are not recording and just playing the video game so oh my god my ping is shit right now don't know why kind of scary but doesn't matter Let's just, oh, okay, I think the server's full, that's why. Mm, let's just give it another go. Come on, high pixel gods. And nope, okay. Uh, let's just go to another server, let's go. Wow, this is full as well, are you kidding me? Okay, mm, let's just go on freaking banter UHC, because why not? It's a pretty good server, I love playing UHC here. Um, it's fun to play, no one's uh, no one's an extreme tryhard person, so it's always nice for that. So as you can see, Minecraft doesn't look too bad with this, I prefer the fancy textures myself. And as you can see, I'm getting a solid 120 frames, a solid 160, 180. So if I just stand here and just turn about, so I'm going to say about uh, anywhere from 120 to 180 I'm getting, which is not bad when you consider the amount of things that are being loaded in simultaneously. And uh, uh, yeah, so it's not bad. And as you can see, in sections which have more mobs and stuff, it's obviously gonna drop. And oh wow, it really boosted here. So I guess there's less mobs here and stuff. So as you can see, there's like, let's just get as far away from the main spawn as we can. So as you can see, about this area, I'm getting 280. It also depends on the area, but you're getting a solid 120 frame rate at any given point apart from the main spawn. And uh, that really shows you something. That now, most console games get stuck at 60, if not 55, and 120 is a really good FPS because you can, you have amazing reaction time with 120. It's almost double 60, so you, it, it's really good. 
Now, chunk loading might get a bit dodgy here, as you can see right there. But it loads in eventually, depending on how fast your computer is and how fast your internet is at that point. So don't worry about it. If you're playing on single player, definitely don't worry about it. And uh, now let's actually try single player worlds. So let's just go cancel, single player, create new world. And let's just generate a new world right from scratch. And don't uh, the settings I've told you, if you follow these settings along with the Razor Core Boost, uh, which I actually have turned off right now, if you have that on, that's going to add on at least... 10 to 15 FPS more because it's gonna stop the background processes. There you go, I'm getting anywhere between 200 to 300 frames per second and it's playable. Honestly, it's more than playable. If you don't mind the dirty grass textures, it's definitely playable. You can see a decent amount of distance and you can see the sun because I have it actually turned on. And the water looks fine. There you go, the water looks like water. And um, if we actually go mining, let me see what happens if we go mining. Doesn't matter, health doesn't matter, health is for scrubs, there you go. And boom, you're getting a solid 400 FPS right there. 390, 400, 390, 448, so this is definitely good for single player world. And you're gonna get a major, major FPS boost. Don't kill me zombie, don't kill me, don't kill me, go away! I can't believe you've done this. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let him kill me because yeah, just do it faster, 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 mate. There we go. So yeah, as you can see, it definitely boosts your FPS quite a lot right there, and it makes your game a whole lot more playable. Gives you better reaction times to stuff that happens around you. Okay, let's say you hear a creeper hissing. Oh no, I have to run. But it may be a laggy world, you won't be able to react as fast, so that's why FPS is a really important part of any game you play. Now the first part of this video helps out all gamers, the part up till I specified for freaking Minecraft. So hope you guys enjoyed, if you did leave a like, subscribe, if this helped you out let me know in the comments. If you have any problems with any of this let me know in the comment section below and I'll be as helpful as I can possibly be. And um, yeah, thank you all for watching and actually you know what? Challenge. Let me know the max FPS you were able to achieve with these settings and I'll comment back with you, you actually know the max FPS I was able to achieve with these settings. So yeah, thank you all for watching. Leave a comment and I'll see you all next time. See you!